You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri. So excited to be here with you. Today we're talking about the fact that it is never too late to go after those goals, those dreams, those ambitions that you have for your life. And if you don't even know what it is, well, you know what? That's okay. It is never too late to find that purpose. And that is our focus for today's show. Also, make sure you stay with us. We're going to be having our inspirational guest in our next segment, Genevieve Baturo. And wow, has she really taken the concept of turning a new page, leaving a very successful job to start something new, the nonprofit, scary, like what would that look like? Would she succeed? And she blew it out of the ballpark. Okay, honestly, I don't want to give it away, but you know, she wondered, was it too late? And she went for it and she she won big. And I also want to make sure that you are supported throughout today's show. So if you want to hear today's show again, go to livingfullout.com. All of our episodes are there for you by various topics and themes that, that maybe you're dealing with today. Or if you have Alexa at home or if you are on the go and you want to look in the app store, just look for Living Full Out Radio. And we just want to make sure that we keep you you know, inspired when you need us most. And I realize the idea of it's never too late. It it sounds good, right? But as the calendar keeps flipping and, you know, we keep having birthdays, sometimes we question, is it getting too late? But I'm here to tell you it's not. But what we always have to do is be honest. And we have to kind of ask the big questions to others and most of all to ourselves so that we can turn that page and we can live life in a big way. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line. Let's go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, Hi, thank you for joining us. Yes, I can. How can I help you? Yes, I had a question for you. Um, Uh I'm about to go through a pretty big job change where I'm, it's in a, the job's in a different state. It's something I've never done before. So I was just wondering if you had any advice for going through that. Well, first of all, congratulations. What are you going to be doing? Um, going to be I work in the restaurant industry and it's going to be running a running a restaurant in um yeah, it's a uh, running a restaurant. So. You know, you know what? I I think that's fantastic. I mean, I was never a good server myself. I I, you know, I spilt trays of food and I can never quite do it right. So I admire those who are in the field who can, but a move can be scary, right? Because right now you have your, your buddies, you have your favorite restaurants that you go to. You just kind of got your, your, your scene, what you, what you've kind of grown up with. And now you're going to this unknown. And what if you don't like the job? What if you don't like where you're living? What if you don't make friends? So all of those things, we, we put them in the fear bucket, right? Fear, false evidence yeah. appearing real, right? These things haven't happened yet. So we really can't focus on the, will I make friends? Will I w- like where I'm living? Will I like the job? Because those are all the, will I? They're, they're, they haven't happened yet. But what you can sure. focus on is being the best you. You know, I was just talking about this the other day with a client of mine. And it's about leaving your mark. You might be at this restaurant for five years, 10 years. You might be there for a shorter amount of time. But it's showing up and and being signature you, which is attributes and skills that only you have, and going there and inspiring the team and leaving that managerial role better than when you took it over. So you want to get excited and juiced up to say, you know what, I can't wait to take this restaurant up a notch. I can't wait to be that leader that those servers and bartenders, maybe they've never had before. I can't wait to guide those team meetings before we open or at the end of the day and see the customer experience 
change and maybe you know great surveys are coming in with with you know good feedback just do you see yeah, what no. i'm saying yeah that's no really really great advice thank you um, yeah and he, and here's yeah, what yeah. i want you to and here's what i want you to think about right because you're you're a leader right i mean you're going to be standing there looking at the faces yeah. of your team so i would consider right now maybe quotes by restaurant owners or people in the business or maybe people that you know that the, your team would relate to. People love quotes and maybe you have a quote a day that inspires them. Um, you know, maybe you do you know things behind the scenes that you know get them juiced up. Maybe there's like a chant or you know maybe there's songs that you can play in the back in the back of the restaurant to get people excited. But start thinking about that now. So when you show up on day one. They're going to be like, who is this guy? Wow. Yeah. What a great hiring decision, right? Now, then you can decide how long you stay. And if you decide to leave, well, they're still going to be in so such awe of who you were and the difference that you made that you win. Do you see that? No, makes sense. Thanks. That's yeah. really helpful. Didn't think about it that way before. I'm so excited for you, and I, 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 I'm excited for your team, and and this is going to be a great, great move for you. And you know what? You can always go home, right? The buddies, the 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 places you like to go, it'll always be there. But this this is kind of a leap of faith, and this is kind of a gamble on you. And I'm excited for you that you're taking this chance. Okay. No, me too. Was a little scared before, and now definitely less scared. So thanks All a lot. Right. Can, now, can you do this? You got, is this something you can do? Be the best manager they've ever had? Yeah, no, I think so. I'm, I'm going to try. Okay, so you're going to do great. Hang in there and uh, call us back. Let us know how it goes. Okay? Yeah, for sure. Thanks okay, so much. Okay, thank you. Love that he asked that question, right? Because we're talking today about it never being too late, right? It's not too late. And, you know, the thing about taking a risk in life, a chance. Maybe that's starting your own business. Maybe that's leaving a relationship or starting a new one or moving to a new town. Whatever you do, you don't want to stay in that gray zone. You don't want to be in that place of woulda, coulda, you know, what coulda happened, right? Or you don't want to be in the, the if, you know, what if I had done that? Because that gray zone will haunt you down the line, down the line in life when you're like, you know, I wish I had. I don't want you having that conversation. And for all of those of you who see your friends and others kind of running by you and they're getting the breaks in life, they're getting that relationship, they're getting that job, and you're sitting there going, what is wrong with me? Why am I wasting time? Or, you know, why, why can't something just happen for me? You know what? Happening is happening. It is. You're just being groomed. You're just being polished. You're like a diamond and, and it hasn't quite found its true shine yet. It doesn't mean that you give up. You keep plowing away and you self-correct, right? So if you're looking for a certain relationship in life, well, maybe you need to still self-correct and look for somebody slightly different. And maybe that different person will be the love of your life. And if you hadn't made those changes or been more open to certain personalities or looks, you would have never been so happy. Same goes with a job, right? Sometimes it's scary to think, I so want to quit. I'm not happy, but what if I quit and, and, I, and I can't get a job? Well, again, you can stay in the job you hate, or you can say, you know what? I believe in my skills and my resume and my ability so much. I know somebody will see that and I will get a job. And what if you have a new job and it's everything you ever wanted, right? So it is never too late for you to turn that page and go for it. I know for me, I've had to do many of those leaps of faith in my life. And, and I wondered back in the day, even before starting Living Full Out, I was a top producing realtor and things were going well, but my vision was, you know, basically going away, you know, day by day, I felt like I could see less and less. And it was scary. Was it too late to start Living Full Out, this, this business that would, would have been global? No, it wasn't. Did I need eyes to do it? No, I didn't, right? I had my team. They were my eyes. And then also, you know, sometimes in my life, I've thought when I've gone, come out of a relationship, I've thought, oh, man, that was three years, and now I'm single again, and now I'm blinder than I was three years ago. You know, 
what if I don't find someone? You know what? I always rallied, went on those apps, went on those sites, and I did. You know, love is, there's not just one soulmate. I believe you can have many, many loves in your life. So know that it's not too late. What you want is out there. You just have to keep stepping forward to get it. Now, stay with us, right? Genevieve Pachiro has an amazing story that she's going to unpack for us and give us all of her nuggets of wisdom. And I want you to ponder, what is it that you want in life? And I want you to keep saying through the show, it's not too late. It's not too late, right? Because that's how you get out there and live your life full out. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. I'm Nancy Stellari. This is the Living Full Out Show. We'll be back. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I like kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? (laughs) Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. (laughs) I'm going to return the kayak. Just make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking. Plus much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then... And then nothing. (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. So one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfulloutcom Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about it is never too late. Now, I know sometimes we think whimsically, like, I'm going to buy that lotto ticket. It's never too late. <laughs> I could win, right? Or we think, you know, I'm going to go to Vegas, play the big tables. It's never too late. But I believe that a lot of when we say it's never too late, a lot of that is in our control. It's really about finding action steps to get us closer to what we want. And sometimes we have to let go of the need to have it be on a certain timing. So for all of you who are pondering today, what do I want? And is it too late to get what I want? It's not. But we have to think about time, people, resources. What do you need to get closer to that ambition? You know, maybe it is more time. Maybe you just need more education. Maybe you're creating a business or a product. And you know what? It hasn't quite come to fruition yet of of what it looks like. You might need more time. Or maybe it's people. You know, it takes a tribe sometimes to make the magic happen. I know Living Falau, we have a lot of teammates here that put this show on and and many, many other aspects of what we do. And so it takes that team. Um, And so you might want to think about in your life, whether it's a personal endeavor or raising a family or maybe it's, you know, flourishing more in your career. You might think about who are those teammates that you need, a coach. You know, maybe it's a writing coach. Maybe it's a speech coach or you know, maybe you're learning new skills and you need to take some classes to, to learn those. Now, you also want to consider money, right? So what money is it going to take? And again, money doesn't grow on trees. I wish it did, but it doesn't. So sometimes we have to earn the money. Might mean that you're working multiple jobs and you're going to say to yourself, okay, I'm going to work two jobs, three jobs. And then in six months, if I budget it all correctly, that's when I'll take my leap. My, my risk, my endeavor. Or maybe, you know, you might need to borrow money or see if you can get a grant or consider free resources or low costs. But time, people, and money is sometimes what we need to figure out, okay, how do I stop saying it's not too late? How do I know, yes, I can do this? Now, the yes, I can do this, people, that's what we try to find every week for you in our inspirational guests. And Genevieve Pichuro, she is amazing, first of all. I mean, you're going to hear her story and say, wow, can I do that? And I'm going to say, yes, you can. In fact, she's going to say, yes, you can, because if she can do it, you can do it. That's one of her mantras. So I very much like to welcome Genevieve to the show. Hello, welcome, welcome. Hello. (laughs) So happy to have you here. And I mean... There is so much to your story, so I'm just going to jump on in, okay? Oh, so I, yes, yes, I, sure. I know that you were such a powerhouse, right? You knew what you wanted in your career from like 23 to 37. You were a high-powered you know, network executive and, and just really going after life in a big way. However, however, like so many of us, and I've been there, you're laying in bed or maybe you're sitting in a quiet room and... You, sometimes we, we have that internal dialogue in our mind. Sometimes it's a whisper. Sometimes it's the higher power. And you heard a calling. And for the first time, you were in a quiet place and you could actually hear it. But what was the calling telling you? What was it asking you? You're absolutely right. It was a calling. And I heard it clearly. And it was a question that was, if this is the next 30 years of your life, is this enough? And I heard that from inside me, and it wasn't from my head. It was another voice deep inside me, and it took me by surprise, as you can imagine. And I realized in moments, I sat down, and I said, I'm alone. And I've been running so hard, climbing so fast, I'm going to be alone. I've missed so many things that are important. And that was the beginning of this really, um, this introspection, really thinking about what I thought success meant. And I knew things had to change. 
Well, and you're right. You did miss out on a few things by choice because you loved your career. You, you chose not to get married or have kids. You were you were you were leading a team, right? You were you had a mission, yes. and and you were yeah. you were succe- successful at it. But but then when you when you sat with that question and you sat in that loneliness, you realized that you did want children. And what I think is so interesting and we hear you know news all the time there you know bad news right it's very rarely good news and on the papers there's these headlines of you know abused children and children who have no homes and and that really kind of got to you and maybe it was a dialogue in the back of your mind that that was getting at you for a long time what did you decide to do yes yes exactly i thought have have i just not heard this voice before and i i said how how can i bring children into my life and I went right to what you said, those pictures, those um, news reports about the children. In in my area, we all have those cases we see in the news of children that are harmed by people who are supposed to be taking care of them. So I started to call shelters. I called the police station, and I asked, where do you take these children? Is it possible for me to volunteer there? And I called and asked if I could come after work to read stories before they went to bed. I don't know why that was just something that instinctually came to me that I, something I could do at night. And I started to do that. And it was just the most grounding, peaceful time I could, I could, re, I could remember. It was amazing. Well, and I know it was heartbreaking for you to see these kids cry and be sad. And you could tell loneliness was in their heart. And you know, their clothes were the wrong size, too big, too small. You know, their hair was lopsided. But, but you know, there was a particular little girl that stood out to you during one of your readings. And she didn't know something that many of us take for granted. What was that? Right. I would read to the kids at night, you know, and it was it was very quiet. I don't know what I expected, but they're, they'd been through such a difficult time and, and they were traumatized. And, you know, then they're, they're told to, to sit down with this lady who's going to read a story. And um, week after week, I read stories. And then I went to see the room they were going to sleep in. And it broke my heart because not only had they come from a really sad place, but this wasn't the bedtime that I knew as a child and that I thought every child had. But, you know, where where had I been? And I brought pajamas the next time. And when I was handing them out, there was a little girl halfway through who was silent, so silent the whole night. And when I tried to give her the pajamas, I pulled out of my bag that I thought would fit her. She just kept shaking her head, no, 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 no. And I didn't know why she was so afraid. And I kept trying, and she kept saying no, and the other children took theirs and went to that room to go to sleep. And finally, she whispered to me, what are they? What are pajamas? And that was the moment everything ended and a new new life started. Wow. Well, we have to take a break, but I'm going to tell you what. Pajama sales are going to go up after this show. Around the world. Around <laughs> oh, the globe. Nice nice <laughs> but, but stay with us, Genevieve. When we come back, we're going to talk more about how it's never too late to live full out. Go after your dreams. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. We'll be back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless Emergency Alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov slash alerts. 
Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really live. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want and we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about it's never too late. Yes, that's right. It's never too late to go after those goals, dreams, and ambitions. And we are now going to continue our interview with Genevieve Petiro. And so much to still get through. So put on your seatbelts, everybody. So welcome back, Genevieve. Thank you, Nancy. Hi. Happy to be with you. So... You know, here's the thing. You were living almost a double life, right? Here you were in your corporate job, successful, demanding, but you loved it. But now you had this new, almost obsession meets passion <laughs> to help these kids. Yeah. And and I can appreciate that. But this is all around when you were 38. Then you also meet a, a gentleman who now is your husband, right? So a whole lot going on during that time in your life. But with all that momentum there was still kind of a little bit of doubt. And what I think is so interesting about today's topic, it's never too late, is sometimes we listen to the negative from other people and we need the positive from those that love us, that care about us to really give us the confidence to go for it. 
And you had a, a friend in the business, in the TV business, that kind of was like, what are you doing? You're crazy. And then, then your, you know, boyfriend slash husband now was supportive and like, go for it. But it was really one person, your Northern Star, your mom. What did she tell you? Yes, it was. And, you know, I, I tell people one of the lessons is to, to gather your cheerleaders because when you get knocked down like I was by that woman who thought I was crazy, um, you know, I it took me a while to get back up. And when I thought, let me let me tell my mom what I'm thinking, you know, I didn't tell many people. She was naturally supportive. She said, that's a beautiful idea. And I don't, you know, I, I know you're not sure how you're going to make this work, but I believe in you and I think you're going to figure it out. And it was so simple. It's just, it was just that support that I needed to, to get me to stand up straight again and give it my all. So simple. But I think because she knew she gave us that bedtime that was so full of love and, and security. And that was a foundation of, you know, us growing up feeling loved. And I think she well, got it. That see, and that's so critical. And we can all be that that voice, that cheerleader for those that we care about. And and I know it wasn't easy, right? You were going tens of thousands of dollars in debt once you got cooking, trying to get all these pajamas and living that double life, not wanting to get fired, but really being checked out of your career. And and you ended up getting a national magazine that ran a very small article on you, but that article was a game changer. Because, wow, the support started coming. What happened after that? That's right. That's right. I didn't expect such an outpouring of compassion and love. And it was like every single person who read that tiny article felt what I felt, felt that pain and that loneliness when I described the little girl asked me, what, what are pajamas? And everyone reacted just like I did. And they started sending pajamas and books and letters and cash. And it was just beautiful and we were reading from from um all these letters and packages crying and the boxes that were coming were stacked up in our one bedroom and finally there was a letter and I read it and it said if you would send us your 501c3 we'd like to consider giving you a grant and I looked at my then husband and I said what is this this 501c3 thing that's how little I knew I didn't even know what or how to start a national legitimate nonprofit. And I looked at all the boxes and I realized this is, this is a responsibility. These people trust me and I had to get down to business and figure it out and do it right. Well, and you know what? It, it, the momentum was just starting and you actually had someone from your past who you'd met oh so briefly offer to help you for free and, and do some PR and, and, then O Magazine came knocking on your door, and they ended up helping you and getting an article out there, and and that again started to up the ante, and you started to develop chapters. How did that happen? That's exactly right. Well, people were reading and seeing about this one woman doing this with a few friends in New York, and they asked, "Can we do it here? Can we help you in Ohio? Can we help you in New Jersey? Can we help you in Detroit?" and I said, sure, yeah, that'd be great. Still figuring it out one step at a time. And I think the beauty of it was that I knew enough to know that communication was number one, that I had to talk to these uh, wonderful volunteers, but letting them have their own ideas and each of them doing something that was their own and creatively figuring out how to have drives and how to raise some funds was just freeing for everyone to feel like they were, um, you know, they were in charge of this beautiful little project in their hometown. And we strung it all together and, and these became chapters and chapter volunteers. I love it. I love it. And I want everybody really to get this, right? This all kind of started at 37, 38 for her. You know, then the magazine does the article at 40 and then, you know, 44, this O magazine that kind of expanded it more. But you even got on the Oprah Winfrey show at 47. I mean, the momentum kept going and going and going. And the pajama program kept, you know, expanding. 
But there was another significant moment. At your 15-year anniversary, you had stayed in touch with one girl, and you had a picture of her when she was two years old holding her pajamas, but she was able to take part as a teenager in that celebratory uh, dinner that you had. What happened there? Yes, that was a, it was an amazing night. I had always kept in touch with Teresa. She'd come to our reading centers. Um, you know, when I saw her for the first time at two, I was going everywhere. I was running ragged, um, bringing pajamas to these shelters and places and reading and then leaving and getting home late at night. And then over time, we opened a couple of reading centers and her group came to read and, you know, every year she was a year older and she was loving reading and being with us and getting her new pajamas every time. And over the years, we stayed in touch. She went to, you know, grade school and middle school and high school and she was just lovely and so poised. And when we were celebrating 15 years for pajama program, I thought maybe I could ask her to come and say a few words and the cherry on top was that those pajamas she was holding were, were Carter's pajamas, and we were honoring the president of the Carter's company. And she was delighted when I asked her if she'd come, say a few words, and then we could show that picture of her as two and show her as a young lady now and help present the big thank you to the Carter's president. And it was a beautiful moment she said that she learned about, um, she learned how to love reading, not just that she had to learn how to read, but she loved it. And she said she loved reading with us and that was so much fun. And she remembered mm. the pajamas and she was going to college and everyone was just teary eyed. It was beautiful. Well, I mean, that's really full circle, uh, brings it all together for why you did such hard work to, to make it all happen. And you know, when we think about your story and and that that whisper, that voice, and how lonely you felt, and then you have that one coworker who was like, "You're crazy! Why would you do this? You have an amazing job." Does it ever haunt you to wonder, you know, what if I had just said, eh, "I'm not lonely. I'm going to get my nails done," or you know what? You're right. What was I thinking? And none of that had happened. Does that sometimes make you go, "Wow"? It does. You know, I, I used to really regret not listening, not being in tune with my heart or my heart voice, as I call it, at a younger age. But, you know, we, we we're, when we're ready, we get the sign. And when we're paying attention, that's the time to move. And I guess it took me till I was 38 or so to have, for some reason, have that silence in me to hear that voice and so i i embraced it and i i have no regrets and it was hard but worth it and i i try to be there for people so many thousands of people inspired me through this 20-year journey and i want to inspire them and share share that inspiration and those lessons those hard lessons i learned really hard lessons i know raising raising living full out like it's a baby right same thing it's a, <laughs> yeah. having a nonprofit or a business is tricky but i just we have just a few seconds left here of the show but gosh we're talking today about you know it's not too late to still go for it and what would you like to share with our audience today about living life full out you know not giving up absolutely i mean it's time goes so fast and the one the one thing, well, the two things, I, I felt the fear, I did it anyway. It was scary, and that's okay. It's okay because it passes and it makes us stronger. But what really is key for all of us at any age, especially when we're, you know, we're past the first round of what we think our job, our path is, but we're rethinking it, the power of one another sharing your stories. We find so many people are on the same wavelength. We're all reconsidering what we want out of life. And it's not always the first thing that we do. And the more that we rely on each other and we share, we can move mountains. We can move each other. It's it's an amazing thing, that human connection and, and power of one another. 
I love it. Well, Genevieve, you always have friends here at Living Full Out. So proud of you. I've said that before. I'll always say it. Thank you so much for sharing your story on the show today. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Nancy, for helping me spread the word. Thank you for your time. Uh, of course. Now, I'm going to wrap up the show and go put on my pajamas, right? And read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And for Thank everybody you. listening, you too could share your story just like she did. Reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. Let us know, you know, what you've gone through. Make sure to give us your contact information. And perhaps you too can be an inspirational guest on the Living Full Out show. And again, it's never too late to even be a guest or go after those dreams or ambitions. And again, what I think is so special is that connection. So we're going to take a stand for you. We're going to hold in our hands that it's never too late for you. We just want you to believe in it as well. And together, we will run, run, run and make it happen. We'll be right back on Nancy Stellari. This is the Living Full Out Show. Stay with us. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, what? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Have you ever lost a cat? And have you ever wanted to get your cat back after you lost it? I'm Andrew Hoffman. I invented the lost cat magnet. Just turn it on and lost cats stick to it. Just listen to one satisfied cat. That's proof. You should invent stuff too. But remember, don't do a lost cat magnet. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll! sake. 
Health insurance is now affordable and covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. When it comes to believing that it's never too late, you always have to remember that that purpose, your calling in life, it's like a magnet inside of you, and it's going to continue to pull you and pull you along. Even if you get off track, it'll pull you back. You just have to trust the process. Most of all, trust yourself as you live full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And I honestly, this topic means so much to me, the fact that it's never too late, because I will tell you what, I feel like I've had this conversation with myself many, many times, whether it be dating or starting a business, or is it, you know, is it too late to go to a location and see all that I can see, even though I can't see much? And what I have found is it's always better to take that leap of faith. It's always better to gamble, bet on yourself and say, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. I'm, I'm going to do my best. And if it doesn't work out, well, you can self-correct and go back to what you were doing, right? But you just want to make sure that you never say to yourself, I wish I had. Or what if I had gone? What if I had taken that chance? And, and the only way you do that is by saying to yourself the mantra of it's never too late. I'm worth it. This can happen. So I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line. We're going to go check in with them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, thank you for joining us. Hi, Nancy. This is Dana. I have a question for you. Yes, how can I help you? You know, with COVID going on and not having the normal break from work-life transitioning to home life, I'm just wondering if you have any great ideas on how to break things up and make life a little more fun when the normal going out for dinners and vacations are kind of off the table right now. Boy, normal never sounded so good, huh? <laughs> if we could I'm just go normal back. Not. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, here's the thing. We're all, first of all, we're all in it together, right? So I'm just going to share some of the things that have helped me and some of the clients that I know have learned learned how to break it up. If you're working from home, you're you're doing classes from home, you're relaxing at home, you got to break up the space and and have that dedicated time. So for example, rather than having your office and your bed, that relaxation meets work all in the same place, break it up. Put your work environment in another room. So that when you are relaxing, watching a movie, it's not like the, the pile of paperwork or your laptop is right there to pull you in. There's this distinction. And it's also really important to establish healthy habits. You know, if, if you have, you know, many others in your household, maybe create, you know, the, the, a new habit where you're all at the kitchen table and you're asking each other questions, thought-provoking questions. In fact, you can go online and print these questions out. Questions like, you know, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Or where is one place that you'd like to travel? Or if you were a time traveler and you could go into the future, into the past, where would you go? You just kind of got to make life fun. And on those days where you're feeling kind of like you're lacking energy, it's almost Groundhog's Day, like the same day over and over again, get yourself dressed up. If you have a Zoom meeting, you know what? Put on a formal gown. Why not? Mm -hmm. Right? Doll your hair up. You might be the best right. dressed on the call, but why not? Or you know what? If there's that day that you're just not feeling it, stay in your pajamas all day. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Why not? And, and also, I believe very much in switching up the energy. And you can switch up the energy by taking a shower. You will never go into that shower as frustrated, as lonely, as irritated as you do coming out. When you come out, you're more refreshed. You, you have a clear head. Maybe you burst some great ideas in the shower. 
Same goes for drinking something warm or cold. You know, those taste buds, they actually can revitalize our, our outlook on life. Or, you know what, saying, you know what, I'm going to take a brisk walk. I only have five, ten minutes before my main meeting, but I'm going to go run the stairs. I'm going to go take a walk around the block. That, too, can shake it up. And I also believe in the power of music. You know, have a playlist for those times you need it most, the playlist to feel successful, the playlist to relax. But if you do all of that, it's keeping life exciting, keeping it fun. Can you try that? That sounds great. I love it all. I know I gave you a tidal wave there, but we're running out of time on the show. But <laughs> I believe in you. Okay, go out there, live life in a big way. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you and so much, every- Nancy. And everybody, it's all about living full out, knowing that it is not too late. you got to turn that page and say, I can, I will, I'm worth it. And just go for it because life is truly meant to be lived. The entire Living Full Out family thanks you for listening. And we got Rich and Eilish and Caleb and Kale and so many people who just want to make sure that you are going for it. You know, get off that couch and say, you know what? Today's the day I turn that page. I say it's never too late and I I don't know if it's going to work out, but I am going to give it my best. Now, if you want to hear today's show again, make sure to go to Living Full Out. Go to all of our social media. we got LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and, of course, YouTube. And go to Alexa or the App Store. Look for Living Full Out Radio. I give you all that because, you know what? It is game on. This life is meant to be played and lived, and you're doing it. No, I believe in you very much. And until then, here's to you living your life full out. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Solari. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.